for taking the time to attend the Diabetes India Conference. My name is Jane, and I'll be presenting my paper on the association between fibroblast growth factor 21 and postprandial blood pressure. FGF21 is a hormone with multiple characteristics expressed by multiple organs. It is an important metabolic regulator, act as a metabolic biomarker, and has been shown to have pharmacologic effects in both animals and human studies. We hypothesize that there is a possibility that FGF21 is involved in postprandial blood pressure regulation. In the present study, we are interested in the postprandial phenomenon for two reasons. Firstly, postprandial metabolism is important for a variety of metabolic responses. Secondly, the change in eating habits put most people on postprandial state majority of the day. Our blood pressure drops after a meal. It is the metabolic response that we are unaware of. Glucose triggers the release of insulin, a vasodilator, which leads to a drop in blood pressure. But the fluctuation is minimized as our counter-regulation mechanism brings it back to normal. While this variation in blood pressure is normal to people who are healthy, people with high blood pressure are susceptible to blood pressure fluctuations and is especially evident after a meal. A drop of more than 20 millimeters mercury from baseline within 90 minutes after a meal is a condition clinically defined hypertension. We hypothesize that FGR21 is associated with postprandial blood pressure regulation. This is a cross-sectional study, a secondary analysis of three collated data facts. There was strict inclusion criteria in the recruitment process, and food intake and physical activities were controlled. We measured the fasting blood pressure and collected venous blood before glucose load. After glucose load, blood pressure was measured every 30 minutes up to two hours and blood serum was collected. For data analysis, we calculated the area under the curve for systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure and use the incremental area under the curve to enter into our multiple linear regression model. Our study consists of a total of 83 participants with a high number of females than males. Both genders were comparable for age, fat mass, fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and vitamin D levels. While males exhibited a significantly higher mean number of metabolic syndrome and blood pressure. The fall in systolic and diastolic blood pressure after glucose load was significant in females, but not in males. Men appeared to be more insulin resistant than females in our sample. The resistance to postprandial blood pressure fall in males may have been blunted by the small number of males included in the study. Gender bias may be present. Our final parsimonious model using backward regression model showed that fasting FGF21 was negatively and significantly associated with postprandial blood pressure, independent of several other factors, including in the model, um, we have gender and fasting insulin, which showed a positive association with postprandial systolic blood pressure. This supports the hypothesis that men appeared to be more insulin resistant than female in our sample. The final parsimonious model for diastolic blood pressure was similar to systolic blood pressure, that fasting FGF21 was negatively and significantly associated with postprandial blood pressure. Fasting glucose comes in the diastolic blood pressure model. This suggests a gender effect in insulin sensitivity with higher fasting insulin signifies greater insulin in um, greater insensitivity towards glucose. In conclusion, our paper presented a significant and negative association between fasting fibroblast growth factor 21 and postprandial blood pressure. For so next step, this result needs replication in larger samples and with equivalent gender groups. This paper is now available on diabetes and metabolic syndrome, clinical research and reviews volume 17, issue 2. If you would like to read more about the paper, do take note of the citation or feel free to get in touch with me. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge my co-authors for their contributions. Thank you.